This world that we are living in is not an easy world. Life, as you all know, is a constant struggle every day. The world is ambivalent. On one hand, we see a lot of goodness, but then also we see so much evil. Science and technology promise to deliver the world from suffering, from all pain. But yet you look at this world, science and technology, they are just means, instruments. But who will use them? That is the question. Who will use them for good? Who will use them for evil? It is true, having a healthy economy, prosperity in a country, is part of building the kingdom of God, giving people a better life. And yet, countries that are prosperous, we fall into complacency, moral decadence set in, because we are tempted to all kinds of evil. It's a double-edged sword. This is a great scandal for us as Christians because when Jesus came, we are told we are called to establish the kingdom of God on earth. More than 2,000 years have passed. Less than one-third or around one-third of the world except Jesus. Secularism, humanism, atheism, is growing among the younger generation. They have lost faith in God. And so we wonder, how could the gospel that we preached be not effective in changing lives, in changing the world? Would the kingdom of God be ever established at all? We seem to be retrogressing instead of making progress in building this world, a world of peace, compassion, and justice. We see so many scandals taking place, scandals of the clergy, scandals of lay leaders, division in the Christian community. And sometimes we wonder, is the church real? Is Jesus truly alive? How could the church be suffering from the scandals that have already rocked the faith of our weak Catholics, less still with the world. The grace of God is at work, even though we think it is not, because we cannot see it. My dear brothers and sisters, yet the mystery of evil is real. We first and foremost, I think we need to recognize the presence of evil. Despair comes to a believer when he thinks that the church is a perfect Christian community on earth. Despair will come when we are ignorant of the fact that the Christian community is a pilgrim church. We are not yet canonized saints, priests, bishops included. We are still pilgrims along the way, purifying ourselves in love. And therefore, in every Christian community, we must expect that people on different levels of spiritual growth, some are nasty, some are generous, some are kind, some are patient, some are intolerant, some are self-righteous. We are all sinners. The devil is real. Evil is real. You look at the trends of the world today. It is real. So don't think that evil is not real. Don't think the devil is a myth. It is real. It is infiltrating into institutions, even the church. No one is exempted from the devil's powerful influence. The devil is powerful. And so it's important for us 
that when we face evil, we have to accept that this is the reality. The scandals that we see should not make us fall into despair. It is part of the mystery of grace. But then again, despair will fall on you only if you think that evil has overcome goodness. Again, this is not true. God intends us to grow in grace through this grace. So don't think that sin is all sin. There is also grace in sin. In fact, many of us who fall into sin, when God enlightens us, we make great saints. Great sinners make great saints. That's why the greater sinner you are, the greater saint you will become. Like St. Paul, like St. Augustine. And it's important for us to realize that at the end of the day, Jesus has triumphed over this world. He has conquered death with life, hatred with love. And so, God's grace will prevail. So don't think, therefore, that the devil is more powerful than our Lord Jesus Christ. God will not be defeated. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, if we are discouraged, if we see that the world has not changed, what must we do? Then it's important, my dear brothers and sisters, we must continue to sow the seed. We must not give up. We must not be discouraged. Where should we sow the seed? Everywhere. On the pathway. On the rich soil. On the grass. Doesn't matter. The gospel is to be given to all. Whether they are lapsed Catholics, marginalized Catholics, people who hate the church, the world, or good Catholics, the gospel must be sown. The seed must be sown. Because all of us need to hear the gospel again and again. And we have a task to do that, to be sower of the seed. That is where, in the face of the challenges of the world, Jesus is inviting us. We need to be creative and proactive in the way we sow the seed. Those traditional means sometimes do not work today. We need to be creative. Just like the world, the world is more creative in creating evil than we are creative in creating good. That is the whole irony. That is what Jesus said in the gospel. The world is more shrewd than we Christians. Creativity, therefore, means to find new avenues, not the standard avenues of coming to church on Sunday. We need to reach out using Zoom, whatever digital programs we have, Reach out to who? Not just to Catholics coming to church on Sunday. This is the minority group, actually. Most of our Catholics don't go to church. They are the unreached, the marginalized, the lapsed Catholics, those who are immobile, those who are sickly. We need to find new ways to reach out to them. New avenues. Pope Francis says, go to the better ground. Go to the sick. Go to those that we cannot touch. That's why when Jesus was kicked out of the synagogue, he went to the beach. He went to the seashore. He was not confined because the synagogue did not welcome him. He had other places. We should not be constrained because of space, because of time. We can find other means. Not only new avenues, we can have also new methods. Jesus, we know, he preached parables. He didn't use doctrinal language. Not intellectual discourse. He was a sharing, helping people to connect with Jesus, connect with Him, connect with God. It's about experience. Parables are all about experience so that people can feel connected. Today, doctrines can't change life. Doctrines cannot change life. It's too intellectual. It's pure discourse. People want not only their head to be enlightened, not to say that doctrines are not important. They want their heart to be touched. That's why Pope Benedict says, unless we bring a person to encounter an event, and that event is Jesus, the life will not be changed. At the end of the day, is, we have to ask, do catechesis, do our liturgical worship, whatever we do, do we help people to encounter Jesus, experience the love of Jesus? 
If we cannot bring a person to Jesus, just doctrines alone, perfunctory celebration of the worship, of the liturgy, no lives will be changed. No lives will be touched. But if we bring someone to Jesus, and he encountered Jesus as his Lord and Savior, life will change. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us be proactive. Let us work together for the growth and extension of the gospel.